Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me. tmasso at thewatchbox.com is still my email address. It's still in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch on our platforms. Reach out to me at tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing the spectacular 2023 Grand Seiko Evolution 9 Tentograph. This is the SLGC001, a one-tenth of a second chronograph featuring a beautiful Mount Iwate peak dial in deep dark blue in what Grand Seiko describes as high-intensity titanium, effectively the equivalent of grade 5. Now, it's a large watch, no doubt, 43.2 millimeters in diameter, 15.6 millimeters thick, just the case lug to lug it measures 51.1 millimeters from end link to end link 53.3 millimeters with a 23 millimeter spacing between the lugs the watch is large and it wears large though in titanium and sapphire and ceramic it's a fairly light piece for its size now i could wear this on my wrist and the further away you get the better it looks uh, but i do think my wrist at 16 centimeters circumference is probably the smallest one that could wear this it's very broad across the wrist and visually it's large so you get a good sense down the barrel how it fits and over the top and then the cuff shot which reveals it to be not all that thick or at the very least because of the sloped bezel and crystal it will slip underneath some cuffs you're good with jackets tighter dress sleeves could be a bit of a crunch so just consider this to be a jacket safe cuffable watch. Now, the bracelet is semi-integrated. It has a conforming end link Rolex or Omega style, but this isn't Patek, Nautilus, or Royal Oak levels of integration. You can see that Grand Seiko is one of the few mainstream luxury brands still using strap tool holes in the lugs. So if you want to use your strap tool to basically bounce the bracelet and use a strap, maybe a custom piece or an OEM example from Grand Seiko, you've got that option. The bracelet does taper down from the end link toward the clasp, and you can see being in titanium, Grand Seiko took an opportunity to polish and bevel the edges, the transition from the satin tops to the edges separated by those polished bevels. Grand Seiko titanium bracelets use pins and sleeves and you can see that's the system for fixing the removable links. So you're going to need a block and punch if you want to size this up. But there are some conveniences built in. You can see there's an intermediate sized link on each side of the clasp. So if you're between sizes with the primary links, you've got that intermediate to make fine adjustments. You've also got four pairs of divots inside the clasp. And using your strap tool, you can actually move the anchoring point to fine tune the fit. The clasp is a thick gauge, single swing arm, titanium shell. You can see that we have a combination of satin polish and then media blast there. Twin trigger release, you must press them both to pop this open so you don't have to worry about one trigger opening it up or inertia or violent action opening it. Now, Grand Seiko polishes its case using a tin plate method that is manual and takes about three years to master. They call it Zaratsu finish. It is Zalitz machine finishing. So while it has its origins on European-made machines, the foremost practitioners of this craft art, which involve eye-hand coordination and experience, they are the people in Japan at Grand Seiko. There's a little bit of fasting at the ends of the lugs. A nods to 62 GS and 44 GS case designs of the past. You can see we have a crown, which is a screw down. The watch is 100 meters water resistant. A ceramic bezel that features a combination of satin and polish on its top, and it is a tachymeter scale. So in conjunction with the chronograph, you can gauge the speed of an object, such as a race car over a kilometer. The dial features outstanding detail. In the mainstream luxury space, Rolex and Grand Seiko have the best dial detailing. The main difference, though, is that the Grand Seiko dials are generally a lot more intricate and handcrafted. So elements like the finishing of these faceted, alternately satinated and polished hands and indices, that's done manually on micrometric diamond-tipped milling tools by artisans whose specialty is making these tiny parts. They're gorgeous, and you can see how the frosted elements of those hands really help it pop against the dial base for high legibility. The elements are then hand-placed and caulked for the final stage of assembling the dial. Now you can see that there's a dramatic scatter pattern. It's not quite a sunburst because it's deeper and more intricately grooved. And that is the Mount Iwate Peak design, Mount Iwate, not far from the Morioka Studios in Shizuku Ishii where these are 
actually created. That's where the mechanical Grand Seiko watches are made. There's the Shinshu studio up in Shujiri that makes the quartz and the spring drive movements, but this is Morioka, and so they can see Mount Iwate, and it has that snow-scattered peaks. So that's where that scattered texture of the dial comes from with a nice deep blue that has long-standing associations with Grand Seiko. We have sunken sub-registers, each one of which has a polished chapter ring. There is a date. The watch does have two subsidiary setting modes. We have the hacking or stop seconds. And then there's also a quick set so you can rapidly cycle the date. Just like that. So we have stop seconds, a quick set date, and as is the specialty at Seiko and Grand Seiko, the chronograph includes a vertical clutch. So when you engage, there's no jump, stagger, or extraneous movement to the seconds hand, and you can leave it engaged with no additional wear, tear, or hazard to the watch. There is also a column wheel. That is the function selector for crisp action. It sounds and feels high quality. Let's take a look at the loom. You can see no shortage. And then we'll turn it over. You can see this is the caliber 9SC5 based on the 9SA5 movement, one of the most modern families of Grand Seiko caliber. Automatic winding, twin barrels with a very flat torque curve, so the timekeeping is excellent and consistent, along with balance amplitude over the full 72-hour power reserve here. Pivots on 60 joules, it's adjusted in six positions, which is one more than a standard high horology or chronometer watch. Flip it over, you can see it has a full balance bridge and a free-sprung balance for shock resistance, and then it uses an overcoil hairspring, the better to keep consistent time in every position on your wrist. And it has a double impulse escapement that is direct and indirect impulse, a little bit like the Omega Coax, but it is patented and distinct. And this is a bigger movement than used in the past, better filling the case back with a more attractive bridge structure and a higher grade of finish. So you really do appreciate all the strides that have been made since previous generations of 9S automatics. The bridge architecture has a wonderful symmetry to it. It's not perfect symmetry, but it's very, very good. The stripes are beautiful. The bevels are deeply attractive, as good as anything you'll see on a Moser or an Audemars Piguet. Solarization on the barrels, again, deeply impressive, even beveling inside the jewel and the screw sinks, a great looking manufacture movement. And it beats away at 36,000 vibrations per hour, which is how this chronograph is able to resolve increments of time as small as one-tenth of a second. If you love this watch, email me. I am tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.